Aiming is the most important skill in all of Call of Duty. And I guarantee you that if you watch this video all the way through and stick to these techniques, you're gonna have drastic improvement in your aim and hopefully get some aim like this. But what's different about this aim guide compared to others is that I've only been playing on a controller at the time of me making this video for about six weeks. And during that time, I was able to raise my KD from a 3.2 all the way to a 3.45. This video is gonna be broken down into four main sections and we're gonna have everything timestamped. However, even if you're a veteran controller player, I highly recommend you stick through this because there's gonna be various concepts you're not gonna to wanna to miss. So let's first start with the foundation of aim that's having the proper settings. The most important being sensitivity. You can think of sensitivity kind of like a scale. The higher it goes, obviously the faster you can move around, the faster that you can flick between opponents However, you need a lot more precision and more fine control on a higher sensitivity. So it's important that we kind of find a balance between these. For myself, I started playing at 7.7 seven initially. However, as I got more comfortable on controller, I get, kind of gained more dexterity and precision. I upped it to 10.10. 10, and with that, I was able to feel a lot more confident in close quarters, especially. However, something I did to be a little bit more precise, especially at long range, is my ADS sensitivity multiplier is down to 0.85. So basically what that means is my hip fire sense is a little bit faster, but when I aim in, my sense slows down just a little bit so I can be more precise. One thing I wanna say though is there's absolutely nothing wrong with playing on a default 6.6 six sensitivity. Some of the best players such as Biffle plays on it, but then there's other players who are the complete opposite of the spectrum like Mutex who plays 2020, but he has a lower ADS sensitivity multiplier down at 0.75. So find your balance, there really is no perfect answer. It's all about what's comfortable to you. So now let's discuss aim response curve type. The vast majority of the pros, including myself, play on dynamic. Basically what this does is it allows for very fine precision aiming when we're just barely moving the stick. However, it has a very fast ramp up speed, meaning when I crank it all the way to one side, I can spin around very quickly. And the combination of these allows for fine precision aiming and also quick movement. Now standard is similar to this, however, it is a slower and more gradual ramp up and then linear is no ramp up it's just a raw input and this is very good for aiming however if you're not on a super high sensitivity movement can be very tricky on linear so dead zone is a setting that is often looked over in my opinion the general rule of thumb is we want to get this as low as we can go without having any stick drift if you're not touching your controller at all and your guy is moving or either moving or the your aim is moving one direction then you need to raise is your dead zone until this stops. So in my opinion, if you have to have your dead zone higher than about 0.08 to avoid stick drift, you might wanna consider looking into a new controller because very fine precision aiming, especially sniping is gonna be very, very hard because you're gonna to have to move your stick a lot more and your speed's gonna automatically ramp up faster basically because of that. Now, the last setting I wanna to touch on is going to be aim assist and to keep this simple, we just wanna keep this on standard. Precision and focusing basically reduce the bubble or the overall size of aim assist. They do make it slightly stronger. However, in close quarters, these are much, much harder to use. So if you're on PC, the scale aim assist with FOV setting, you're gonna to wanna to keep that disabled. And basically what that does is the picture on the left here, it basically makes our aim assist bubble wider compared to having it enabled. As long as you're playing on a FOV, uh, larger than the default of 80. Personally, I play on 120 FOV with an affected setting. So now that we've covered settings, we need to talk about the controller or the equipment we use. So personally, I am playing on a Scuf Infinity PS4 version, but one of the big things I wanna mention here is my right stick here is longer than my left. It came with swappable stick length. However, if you guys are on a normal controller, something you can do instead that is basically the exact same thing is getting what's called a control freak. These are pretty cheap. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. However, they're basically detachable uh, sticks that they can pop on and off your controller to make it longer. And basically what this does is it's gonna give you a lot more surface area and basically allow you to be much more accurate. Now for a quick comparison, you I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but the one that I have is the extra tall version and it is slightly taller than my right stick. Uh, one of the ones I've heard recommended a lot is the Galaxy Edition. It comes in a tall and extra tall version. My right stick is the equivalent of having just the tall, not the extra tall. But the left stick I keep is just the regular default height. Now, another thing I wanna talk about is going to be your triggers. So I have what's called digital tap triggers. This is me hitting them and basically they are like mouse clicks. However, if we compare that to a regular standard controller, you'll see that you have 
these big buttons that, you know, there is a, a trigger, there is a pull to that. And what we can do instead is we can go over to our settings in the controller and on the button layout preset, if we hit square, it will flip our L1 with our L2 and our R1 with our R2. And now that we're shooting with L1, R1, basically it's just gonna be a lot more responsive instead of having to pull that trigger. And this makes things like semi-automatic gun, semi -automatic guns like pistols way easier to shoot. So now let's finally get into some tech techniques that we can use to instantly improve our aim and accuracy. And the first one in the most basic concept is gonna be what's called centering. So all centering is, is keeping our white dot at chest level. When I see a lot of new players, if I'm ever spectating them, I'll see them running around looking down at the ground. And the problem with this is if someone is comes out at me, I have to now look up and then aim over to shoot them. But instead, if I'm already at eye level, now I can just bam, there's no, you're basically taking a step out of the process. But beyond just that, we also wanna keep our white dot wherever we expect an enemy might be. So if I'm coming around a corner, I wanna keep that white dot in the center, kind of hugging that corner as I go around it. And this is a, a concept that you'll see that's very important in like CSGO and Valorant. And basically what we're doing is that we're always keeping it there where we might see an enemy. That way we are already aimed on them and all we have to do is aim in and pull the trigger. So centering also ties in very heavily with movement and I've got a clip that illustrates this perfectly. So here I'm on top prison. There's a guy at the end of uh, the opposite roof of prison here and he's kind of in that doorway. We're kind of zoom in and slow down that way you can see him. And I recognize he's there. So I'm gonna get behind cover and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide cancel challenge out and when I do you're gonna see how I am centered basically perfectly on that doorway so that all I have to do is aim in and shoot and I am gonna be doing a movement guide here in the very near future so if you're new here maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on that because movement is almost just as big as an aspect as aiming is in Call of Duty so one last example that I want to talk about is and this is very important if you're not playing on a very high sensitivity is the need to un ADS in close quarters so in this situation here i know that there's some people kind of down the hall uh here at prison and i'm going to side cancel around the corner and there's going to be a guy in the doorway i'm going to be able to get him down but his teammate is going to push in very quickly to my left so i'm going to un ads or unzoom from my gun i'm going to center over to him with my hip fire sensitivity because that's a little bit faster since i run a 0.85 multiplier then I'm gonna aim in and shoot him. And especially if you're someone that plays on like a six, six sense, you are really gonna need to get comfortable doing this of un ADSing and then flicking over to them and then kind of restarting to aim in and shoot them. And basically to illustrate this really quickly, let's say this is the tires is a person and this is a person. It takes me, you know, relatively, I'm on 10, 10, relatively fast sense, but if I hip fire, it's much faster for me to flick over between those targets. So now let's move on to strafing. And I think this honestly is probably the most important thing to instantly get your aim better. So what I mean by strafing is just pushing the left stick all the way left or all the way right. So number one, the most obvious thing is when people are trying to shoot at you, if you're strafing, you are moving target, you're not stationary. So it's gonna be, it's gonna make their aim worse. However, what's more important is that when we are strafing, we get some Something called rotational aim assist and this should be your best friend as a controller player and it's something that the pros really know how to abuse one thing i've noticed is that on days that i feel like my aim is not very good is usually days that i'm not doing a good job of thinking about strafing and we're going to talk a little bit later in the video about some ways to kind of maximize this and to make sure you are thinking about strafing but something else really quick is i'm going to leave a link in the video in the video description of a gun class from the volk that is a max strafe speed build and basically you strafe so fast with that class that you have to constantly think about strafing because you're you're literally just strafing so incredibly fast and that is going to give you more aim assist and lead to better accuracy so the last technique i want to talk about is a little bit difficult to explain but i'm gonna do my best here and that is focusing on the target and not on your reticle or on your iron sights so i have a lot of background in aim training with mouse and keyboard and in that community one of the huge things is especially with tracking is you always keep your eyes trained to the target not your crosshairs. So for example, if we are looking at this green uh, sign here, I want to keep my eyes trained on the green part of the sign and not on the black part of the iron sights. So moving on to our final concept is how to use strategies to effectively practice and get better at aiming. Now this is best done in Modern Warfare multiplayer. It can be done in Vanguard. However, the engine is a little bit different, so it's not quite the same as Warzone. I don't necessarily recommend it in Cold War because Cold War's engine feels so much different compared to Warzone's. So 
we'll go over to multiplayer here. We're gonna go down to private match. Now this concept is similar than what I talked about uh, in my first bot to pro video. However, there's a lot of new tricks and new concepts in here that I wanna expand upon. So we're gonna go down to game setup here. And for the map, I recommend going with speedball. You can really use any small map, but speedball, speedball is small and has lots of cover, which is really good for kind of practicing playing with cover and also utilizing our movement. For mode, we're just gonna keep it on free for all. For the game rules under the game section, turn the time limit and score limit to unlimited, match start time down to five seconds and skip infill. Nothing needed in advance, go over to player. Number of lives set to unlimited. Max health, we're gonna turn this all the way up to 300 in health regen fast. The reason for this is even though Warzone is 250 on Rebirth Highland at least, we want to go even higher that way we have to take more time and focus more on tracking under the team section we're going to go uh we're going to turn kill cam off or radar always on put that on constant and weapon weapon pings on minimap as enabled that way you can basically always know where your enemies are and we can just focus on aiming and then for gameplay make sure spawn ammo mags are turned to max health steal enabled basically what this does is when you're shooting them you're actually gaining health back and again this just makes it a higher health pool you have to focus on tracking more and then make sure you have the field upgrade charge rate and modifier both at the 10 times that way you can set your field upgrade as a munitions box and you can get it back really quick so you don't have to worry about ammo now once you have that you can actually save those settings to the custom game mode you do have to change the bot setup each time it doesn't save i recommend just going all the way down to recruit and then turning this all the way up to 11 or you can turn it down to like maybe six or so if you don't want it to be quite as hectic, but I play on 11. For the loadout, I recommend something, usually a double SMG. So personally, I go with the MP7 like this, and I recommend going with sleight of hand that way, because you're gonna be shooting so many bots, we need to be reloading a lot. And then I really like the Bison because it's got a default like 64 round mag, I think, again with sleight of hand. And then for perks, make sure you have the scavenger perk on, that way when you're killing bots, you're getting ammo back very quickly. So basically the whole idea behind this is that we're gonna get way more reps and way more practice than we would in a standard like rebirth island or caldera match but what's very important is i don't want you guys to just go in here and aimlessly just kill bots i want you to focus on those three techniques that we talked about so a good centering making sure to always be strafing when shooting and focusing on the target and not on your reticle or iron sights now if you're a brand new player or you're learning a new sensitivity just focus on killing bots try to kill 100 200 or even more if you're really dedicated however i have a set routine that i follow every single day and this drastically has helped my aim improve very quickly so before i get on i load in and i will kill 100 bots with aim assist turned off the reason for this is simple with aim assist off we have to be way more precise with our aiming and we'll go through 100 bots and trust me when you start this you're going to feel like a bot your aim is going to be very bad but after just a few weeks of doing this i feel very confident honestly on aim assist off and i can still aim relatively good especially in close quarters once you go through about 100 or so or as many as you have time for you're going to make sure you want to turn aim assist back on and kill some more bots before you jump into warzone normally i go for another 100. the reason for this is sometimes aim assist likes to work against us and we need to kind of reacclimate ourselves to that because sometimes you have to actually push through that aim assist and what i'm what i can tell you is that when you turn it back on you're actually going to notice how much stronger the aim assist feels but remember to focus on strafing and centering and focusing and all those things because when we're strafing we're going to get that additional rotational aim assist now if you're wanting to practice your sniping i'd recommend going in back and going changing the map from speedball to euphrates bridge then you're going to want to go down to the game rules and under player change the health down to 150 and i have this saved as a as a separate game mode called sniper warm-up the reason for the 150 health is anything higher than that will not be a one shot headshot down and what you can do for that is you can go on top of the bridge there on top of the bus and you can get a lot of more longer range snipes and you can just sit up there and get as many snipes in as you want and sniping was definitely a weak point for me when i first started but i very quickly got better because of this so if you struggle with recoil control i'd recommend going in with the on 300 health through euphrates bridge go over to our options and go to controller and we're going to go down to ads sensitivity multiplier we're actually going to turn this up quite a bit i recommend going up at least like 50 percent or so from whatever you play on so we'll go up to let's say 1.4 for myself basically you can find these guys out here and because my aim sensitivity or my ads multiplier is higher i have to be very precise with how much i pull down one of the big issues typically with people that have struggle or that people that struggle controlling recoil is that they either are pulling down too much 
when they're shooting where they're shooting toes or they're not pulling at all and then it's going up and they're missing. And so by turning up that ADS sensitivity multiplier, it forces us to be very precise with how much we're pulling down. And this is really gonna help with our long range aim in general because we just have to be more, again, more precise with our thumb. One thing I'll say about this though, is I don't recommend doing too much of this because we don't wanna kind of mess up our muscle memory. So keep it to maybe a max of like 50 bots per day or something like that. And then go back down to whatever your normal ADS sensitivity multiplier is. And one last tip for people that are on console that struggle with recoil is instead of going with a higher zoom optic, like a 3X, go with a little bit lower zoom optic such as a Corp Combat for MW or something like in the 1.5 to 1.7 X zoom. The reason for that is a lower zoom on console FOV is gonna be similar to what a 3X zoom is on 120 FOV. This is gonna reduce that visual recoil that console players often have trouble with. Now look, killing bots can only get you so far and it's great for getting lots of reps in and really just working on our basic aiming. However, it is not going to simulate actual Warzone. So the best way you can possibly do that and get more reps in a normal Warzone game is by 1v1ing your friends. And this one, one, it's a lot of fun, but you can also practice your movement combined with your aim. And if you do this on a daily basis, trust me, this is where you really make those huge, huge improvements, especially if your friend is a higher skill level. But if your friend is not very good, maybe you're getting like your mom or your dad or your little sister or something, then go against them with aim assist off to make it more of a challenge for yourself. So lastly, I want to touch on something that might end up being a whole video on itself, and that is using aim trainers such as aim lab to practice with the controller. So I have hundreds of hours on aim lab from playing mouse and keyboard, and this is what I attribute to basically all of my success with my aiming. And I wanted to see, can you do it on a controller? And there's actually a lot of features that support controller aiming on aim so aim lab can be downloaded for free on steam and once you get everything set up here i just want to really quickly how to set up the settings in order to play on a controller so go to controls here set the profile to call of duty series and the game release to modern warfare warzone for your sensitivity just put whatever your x or your horizontal axis sensitivity is assuming they're the same for your field of view you're going to want to set this to whatever your field of view is in game here and then we'll go down here and change our ADS field of view assume to affected, assuming that's what you play on. For ADS profile, if we're practicing long range settings, we're gonna do assault rifles. If we're doing close range, we're gonna do submachine guns. And if you're doing sniping type scenarios, I recommend going with like the yeah, because I think it's the best one that I found. You can set what your ADS sensitivity multiplier is down here, which for me is 0.85, and then your monitor distance coefficient, which is actually in graphic settings, should be 1.78, assuming you're on a standard graphic uh, or a standard monitor, standard size monitor. As we keep scrolling down to input settings here, you're gonna put your controller curve onto whatever you play, so dynamic for me. And there is actually aim assist. Now I will say the aim assist in aim lab is nothing compared to what it is on Call of Duty. It is very, very minimal. It is just a very slight aim slowdown once you get over the target but I do think it is useful to play with. So we're gonna save these and I'm gonna put some text on screen of what my favorite scenarios are to use. And basically let me know in the comments if you wanna see a way more in-depth video on this. I will say that this does definitely help and I will definitely say that tracking especially has uh, helped a lot, of, especially with those kind of long range, you know, like spawn protection type tracking clips that you see from me. So guys, that is gonna wrap up our Warzone aim guide. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please leave a like for me and consider subscribing for lots more content like this, including the movement guide that will be coming out in the near future. If I miss anything, ask me down below. Otherwise guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you in the next one.